In 2007, Matthew Arnold topped the table as the most improved school in the country. Key to that success were the school's GCSE English results. They didn't like me because I was different. They didn't like me because I had high expectations. They didn't like me because I'd stand over them while they wrote two to three sides. You know, I made my expectations clear right from the outset. I wanted the department to be a success. I felt it had a lot of potential. I just thought it needed to be reworked, reshuffled. So people were given responsibilities to make more of a team. The team worked together and restructured the delivery of the curriculum, making sure that we all teach the same thing at the same time, to be consistent and enable all kids to get the same education across every English lesson. And across the whole school, the new team now ensure English maintains a high profile. Yeah. The staff in the English department is more stable over the last two years, definitely, and quite a few of us have got responsibility. As literacy coordinator, I look at how literacy can have an impact around the school and how different teachers can use it in their lessons um, across the curriculum. And again, it gives the students the knowledge that English skills can transfer to every subject in the school. One of Sherry's first acts was to choose a new syllabus. We changed it to AQA, which is a syllabus that most schools in the country do, Spec A. It's, you know, lively, upbeat, kids relate to it. The set texts are on issues that revolve around their own lives. So the kids were more engaged, more excited about learning about these things and responded so much better. What about where he says there? One very said where he says that, oh, you can't get away from me at school. Yeah. yeah. yeah where is that? Where is that? Is that, is that, that's in, that is in this chapter. That's just before they get married, isn't it? But Sherry Zan's most radical strategy was to enter a select group of 33 students a year early for their English GCSEs. We cream off about 33 kids at the end of year eight. They study their SATs in year nine and when they finish their SATs in May, they start doing their GCSE coursework. And at the end of year 10, together with the rest of the year 11 group, they will sit their GCSE language and lit exams. And by the time they leave here in year 11, they would have left having studied an AS in literature as well. The impact that has had on the whole school in English has been immense. But first, Sherry had to convince the school. It met with quite a lot of resentment at first. People thought it wouldn't be possible. I showed them the data and, you know, the kids were up for it. Um, and I said, I'd do all the hard work. You know, it would all be on my neck. And they decided to support me and we went for it. Well, when we were in year nine, Miss Sam came in and she said, well, we're going to start doing coursework, like the year 10 coursework. And we thought, well, this is sort of not usual. And she goes, oh, don't worry, it's all good. And then they said, oh, well, we'll do this GCC a year early. So we sort of, we did everything at, a, at quite a fast pace, but sort of from year nine, we could tell, she was sort of scoping us out to tell whether we're sort of, we could handle the pressure of having, like doing all the work and coursework quite quickly. Well, the theory behind the entering early concept is just because the kids get bored, they're so bright that they do switch off if they're not pushed and motivated and challenged. In the first year, we had all the pressure on us and we, you know, we had to get in all the coursework, we had to get to know exactly what we were talking about. And therefore the exams came in a year, we did it, pressure over after a year. Whereas if it was over a space of two years, I think we'd just get more relaxed about it, we'd not do as much work. It's very emotive, the uh, father talks very deeply about his son. And you create a sort of feeling of sympathy. Like at the beginning, I felt like I didn't want to do it and there was like no point, I might as well take two years, but now I've done it and I've got my results, I feel a lot better. And the results across the board ensured that Sherry Zan's gamble had paid off. We all got A star to C, no one got lower than a C. We all, 100%, it was 100% pass rate, which it really it astounded us because I know, in my own opinion, that thinking that I took it a year early, maybe I wasn't ready, 
But when I looked at my marks and I realised how hard it actually worked and how the results came out, that it was a quite a good idea. I think taking it early has really given me a confidence boost in all my other subjects, not just English. And, you know, I'd encourage anyone who's given the opportunity to take it early to take it. Right, Year 11, as we talked about yesterday, we're going to have some of the highly intelligent AS pupils in teaching some of the lessons today. So can we have a look now, please? A couple of minutes in your books. Check you've got your annotation notes, otherwise use your anthology. It's not just about the high achievers doing well uh, in their early entry, it's about those pupils inspiring and encouraging other members of Year 11 to do well in their exams, whether it's by telling them how their exams went or by going into classrooms and giving them practical advice and help. Right, so you, you write a specific statement and then you could say, death is shown in the poem of Education for Leisure through through the structure and then you go on to write about the structure and how death is shown through the structure. We've got 33 kids who have been through the system, who know exactly what the exam requires, what the examiners are looking for, and we use that to our best advantage. Yeah, we're doing it. I think once you've done it yourself, I mean, especially when you've done it just the year before, it's so much easier to tell someone else how to do it. That'd be like my point, and then I'd have to yeah. explain. Yeah, yeah, you're ever you put it's P again, point, and then evidence, and then you explain that evidence. Some people find it daunting to go into a, a peer group class and, and to teach. Um, I quite like it because it helps me also understand. And, you know, even though we're helping them with GCSE and yet we're doing AS, it, it still helps because you're still analysing things and you're still looking into text. It shows the speaker is blunt. The it does really help coming from the peers because um, they do sort of trust them, they respect them, they realise they've gone through the stress and it's not just a teacher saying this is how it's going to be, they've actually done it. Yeah, it's more useful because the student actually knows that the stuff that um, we can get stuck on, but the teacher wouldn't know that, so they take more time to explain that to us more fully. It's more persuasive um, because they're people your own age, you can connect with them more than just a teacher. They can say it in a fun way that will make you feel more encouraged to do well. Going along. Having more children in the classroom also means you get more variety of answers. It's not just teacher-led saying this is the right answer, this is what you should say. If you've got maybe 10 pupils who have already sat the exam, that's 10 different sets of ideas that will help the whole group to improve their exam results. But it's not just the AS students who help out with their peers. Sherry has also got the early entry year 10s in on the act. OK, today we're going to be working with you, year 11s and we're going to be analysing the other cultures' poems and cut together coming up with an essay. Helping kids out that are older than us was really scary, I really thought, because I always think that they obviously think they know better than us or they may even like think that we, we don't know a lot. So when you start doing it, everyone's a bit scared and shy, but as you carry on with it and help them more and more, everyone becomes more open with each other and it's really good for them and us as well because there's things that we maybe don't know that they could help us with. How do um, metaphors convey the culture in Hurricane Hits England? She uses the metaphors to convey how her roots explore how different gods come through weather, and that can link back to culture, because obviously it's all about the reader learning and exploring about different cultures, and that's what the metaphor does. At first, it felt a bit patronising, but whilst getting involved with the whole group, I found it a lot easier. It was a bit intimidating, thinking you're going to have younger people helping you, but. It was fine in the end. I thought it helped really well. Should we go on to write in the language section of the paper? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. It's given the whole school something to look up to, something to aspire to. It's raised the expectations and it's, it's raised the game, really. You get more and more kids looking up to these early entry kids, asking for help. More and more kids rising to the challenge, thinking, well, if this lot can do it, so can I. Inside knowledge of the exam criteria gives Sherry a clear focus on how her lessons are organised. I'm an examiner for AQA myself, so that obviously helps knowing what they're looking for and that's how I structure my lessons and that's how the department now structures their lessons at GCSE too. Right, so we've identified then that the essay structure for this particular essay, so the literature essay on set text, is broken up into a three-part essay. Introduction, in which you have a general statement, a specific statement, a link sentence into the main, 
You do your main section and you conclude with reference back to the title. Everyone got that? Yes. yes. One of our strategies is to incorporate a timed essay at least once a week. And uh, they do an essay again for homework once or twice a week. So that obviously gives the kids the practice they need before they step into that exam. All right, you have 45 minutes. Off you go. As soon as they start hitting those A's on the essays, you see that these essays start flowing in every day. Handfuls of essays get handed to you because the kids are desperate to get another A and then desperate to get the A star. To start with, I hated the timed essays, to be honest, because they were just really stressing me out at home. But once Miss Anne explained to us what, what we needed, what we didn't need, and now they just come easy to write because we've done so many of them. Now we know how to organise our time and to make sure we only get down the stuff that's going to get us the good grades instead of waffling on about things that don't even need to be in the essay. The more essays we'll do, it's um, more likely that one of those topics will come up in the exam itself. So therefore we've done it already and we know how to do it and go through and get the best one we can. Sherry's relationship with her students is key to keeping them all on track. I'm not here to discipline them. I don't whack them into a detention if they haven't done their homework. I may make it into almost a real-world adult scenario. If you haven't done your homework, come and find me before the lesson and renegotiate another deadline. And that works really well. I think by doing that, you build up some kind of trust between the kids and uh, they understand that, you know, I don't set the homework to give myself more marking, I set the homework because it helps them. Lots of praise helps students keep their work rate up. I spend hours on my marking and I've encouraged that across the department really to make sure that the kids have something to read, a positive comment, an encouraging statement. The kids then are willing to spend hours slogging over their homework. But for Sherry, it's not just about producing children who can pass exams. We don't just teach them to write essays, we teach them to gain confidence, we teach them how to speak, become more articulate, the skills that they need in the real world. You've got to be human. You know, speak to them about normal issues. Kids relate to that and actually really appreciate a teacher's honesty, really appreciate to see that, you know, teachers are humans and we do have emotions, because then they relate to us on a different level. She's just different from the other teachers. Like the other teachers will treat us as a student and she'll, they'll just help us with the work and everything else. Whereas Miss Anne, she'll, she'll get involved with us, she'll help us get involved with the book and she takes things, she can make things easier to understand and she makes it more fun. She seems to like really care about what, how we do and uh, she, she stayed behind with me every day until a good half five to get the coursework done just so she could help us achieve well. And, just so we could do well within the course, so she, without her, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be where we was. I wasn't confident in myself doing English, but Miss Anne sort of sit, sat down and said, you know what, you do have a talent for English, don't let it go to waste, just try your best. And ever since then, she sort of pushed me to do my best, and that's because of Miss Anne, I got the grades I did. <laughs>